Well, good morning, everybody. I long suspected that uh, folks in, in this area of endeavor survived on caffeine, donuts, and beer. And based on the program notes, I, I now have it confirmed. So I also know walking in, a number of you have told me that this is not your prime time of day, necessarily. So I will consider my remarks a uh, success if nobody actually uh, falls out of their chair as they nod off. But I am very, very excited to be here again. Uh, our interaction at the last conference helped inspire me uh, to work with our great group of technologists uh, in the city of Portland to have the city lead a regional effort to get us in the forefront of open source and open data uh, with Portland City Government. And I want to acknowledge some of those folks in follow-up to my time with you last time that have really, they're at the vanguard of open government, open source, open data. We have uh, Mark Granke, who's the Director of Technology for the City of Portland. Rick Nixon, who's been uh, his right-hand person for all the civic apps work, and then is Philip here somewhere? Philip back there, who's uh, leading innovation, and then Skip Newberry on the policy side in my office. Folks, they work really, really, really hard, and give them a round of applause, because they've earned it. <laughs> now, when we got together last time, uh, you in the Q&As asked for us to lead in the area of, of open source, and I want to uh, report on that in some detail, although I think many of you already know what we're up to based on earlier sessions. But you also asked for city government to help in terms of being a early client of work that comes out of this area, uh, to buy products, uh, that were generated locally and to have city government be uh, the first client, not the second, third, or fourth client after all the bugs are worked out. So I'll report a little bit on that. You also, uh, we were heading into a recession, or actually it was full honest last time I met with you, and you also asked for financial assistance, that this was uh, industry and endeavor that uh, had a hard time scaling up because lack of first client, lack of capital, um, and I'll report on what we've, we've done in, in that area. But before I do that, I want to just share with you a uh, little bit more about Civic Apps. It's an opportunity for us to change the very relationship between a government, in this case governments, plural, and the people that we serve. Uh, not only in the convenience of finding what, allowing, giving people tools to find what they want when they want it, but also in terms of accountability. And the uh, citizen reporter that was done in-house um, with the city of Portland is a small example of that. We, for the, we, for the first time, get pictures of potholes, and we get the exact coordinates of where they're at, and people, at least on one platform, can submit that to us in an integrated software system that then reports back to the customer uh, or the person submitting it whether or not it got done. And I can't tell you how satisfied people who have access to this app are to be able to get that little notification back that says it was done. And they can see it for themselves 
um, if they go back to the uh, incident or the problem that they reported, but that since that government reported back to them in addition to doing the work has been, you know, for me a surprisingly small step, but a huge source of satisfaction uh, for Portlanders that have had access to this. Our biggest challenge has been and our biggest complaint has been to offer that kind of customer service on more platforms. Um, and so we're working on that. Uh, we, uh, our great technology department, prioritized that uh, in an in-house effort to uh, sort of prime the pump. And it is, uh, I know you're gonna be focusing on other opportunities to put good data to work. We, um, in, we are obviously with your partnership trying to take this much further. The Civic Acts uh, program has uh, gotten a lot of national attention because it's regional. It's not just one city. And it's gotten a lot of recognition for being regional because we're not that unique. There are 60,000 people who live in the region that work in the city of Portland but don't live in the city of Portland. And so a lot of the other data sets um, that have been released across the country have been for one jurisdiction. And we've worked really hard to work across jurisdictional lines with TriMet and Metro and others and really offer uh, open data um, that's really much more realistic to uh, the, the daily life of folks in this region. Um, we, uh, we, are, uh, we have no shame, or very little shame. Uh, we've been offering, as you know, contests uh, for anyone who wins, and at the end of the month, one of you could be a lucky winner of a year-long TriMet pass, um, among other things. Ah, I just made that up, Mark. Better fulfill it. <laughs> um, the area, if I could pitch you on that, we need a lot of work, um, and there've been. A, I've looked at the uh, the ideas that are submitted. The area of, of city government, especially, but of all local government, that remains a significant mystery to. Uh, citizens is the actual workings, decision-making workings. Um, you know, someone submitted an idea around trying to make more useful real-time in English sort of apps around city council, for example, Portland City Council, issues being considered. Well, every city council agenda can have anywhere from 60 to 150 items on it. And it is, it remains to most Portlanders, and this is true for city governments and county governments around the region, a complete mystery how work actually gets done. So if I could pitch you on anything, and there are a lot of great ideas there, I would pitch you on something that makes the actual decision making um, easier but more understandable um, to citizens. Since we last met, we've done more than just sort of have a collection of individual sort of silos of innovation. We've also sought to surround that with an economic development strategy. And for the first time in 14 years, the council adopted just that, an economic development strategy that has digital development as one of the four uh, target industries that we focus on. And what does that mean? It means we'll help any business that matches the basic values of our city. But when we have proactive time, instead of every morning getting up and deciding the priority of the day, we've done our research. And we looked at where, what local assets do we have that match the fastest growth trends, economic growth trends, uh, in the years ahead, both regionally, nationally, and growth trends around the globe. And that's why digital development uh, became a target industry. Our value proposition in this area, we're not Silicon Valley, and frankly we don't want to be in many ways. We offer a much better quality of life than Silicon Valley. But, yes. But where we can compete and win 
um, on a proportional basis with places like Silicon Valley is we, are, we have a, a more diverse group of technology folks here. We have the, the, it might clearly a smaller, but especially around software, we have a greater diversity of different kinds of talents, approaches than almost any place else in the world. We're also incredibly, this industry group is also incredibly agile. And the passion here, because you've had to kind of fight to sort of be recognized and so sort of from a grassroots basis, in many ways, uh, self-help, sort of helping each other, we're also uh, really quick. We work together better than a lot of other uh, industries, uh, local industries of this nature. And that is the core of how we're going to succeed. Uh, one example is this civic apps and this partnership between government and uh, folks like you. That's how we compete and that's how we succeed. And the talent here is amazing and we want to support it. So let's talk a little bit about um, how we can help you and other talented folks succeed. Uh, the recession that we're in has uh, been a credit crunch. Uh, we've seen a lot of businesses go under uh, in all industries. This particular industry, software, especially portion of this industry, has actually done pretty darn, darn good compared to other industries during this recession. It doesn't mean that folks in, in the real world haven't been severely impacted, uh, but we've done okay. Uh, there are worst places. In response to this, though, barrier of lack of resources, lack of access to capital to bring the best ideas to market and then to scale them up, uh, we put together the Portland Startup uh, Seed Business Fund. And that came as a direct request out of the software industry. And it has been capitalized at $250,000. We have private sector matching contributions and now uh, this year in my budget, even though we've had to cut the heck out of city government, we put another quarter of a million dollars in it. And you can, if you haven't heard about it in detail, you can just go online at uh, mayorsamadams.com and find ways that you can access it. Um, the other thing that we're working on is with uh, the Portland Development Commission. We have funded the Portland 10, which is a boot camp that works with 10 startups. Yes. And our goal is for those, so there's access to capital, now it's also access to capital and the very best, getting you connected with the very best thinkers that we can gather from around the world. And then helping you, sometimes tough love, that's why we call it boot camp, uh, but helping these 10 uh, startups or 10 individuals or firms or ideas to get to a million dollars a year in revenue. So we're really trying to, and again, this came out of when asking you all and other folks in the industry, what can city government do? What can the Portland Development can, can do uh, to help? And so these open source startup capital funding and then the boot camp, which is funding with the best mentorships um, associated with that it all comes out of the kind of feedback that we're getting. And speaking of feedback, um, we really are interested in helping the industry based on what you say you need. And so you'll have an opportunity, if you haven't already, to be contacted by email or other forms of communications to take a survey. And we really need you to spend that seven minutes of filling out that very boring, maybe, and dry survey. Because that will help us over the next year to take what we've done together and make sure that we're working on the kinds of things uh, in partnership with all of you that will make you all successful. I am incredibly enthusiastic and excited about what you are doing. And I wanna thank the organizers of this great conference, 
um, for everything that they've done. Um, we, uh, we are uh, just at the very beginning of reaching our potential. And you can count on me as your mayor to do everything I can, working with my team, to see that you are very, very successful. I want you to take over the world from your base here in Portland. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Hello, hello, hello. Check, check, check. This is like, if you ever watch Hi, like uh, obscure cable channels, <laughs> yeah. it's like, you know, welcome yeah. to Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> Right. This couch has been appraised at ten dollars. It doesn't matter. Cammy wanted it in the lounge. <laughs> oh. oh, we're live. Like how he does us that afterwards. Yeah, we've been yeah. prattling on that's for a while his, that's now. That's kind of the thing he does. Okay, yeah. well, just point to me when I should actually start the, you know, talking part. I'm ready to go. Whenever I want to. And whenever you want to. Okay. She always makes me he get very goofy. Edit. He always says he'll edit this part out, and then he, and then he never no, does. And then he edits all the other stuff out. He just uses this part. Okay. Good morning. We're live from Ellis Bridge Day Three, and I'm here with Mayor Sam Adams. I'm Cami Chaos. I forgot that part. I don't know. You guys know that. The You're smart watching yesterday. and lovely Cami Chaos. Oh, thank you. I paid him to say that. No. Um, uh, you were here giving the keynote this morning. Yeah. Uh, you gave a keynote last year as well. Yes. Do you have a thing for open source? I have a total fascination and uh, enthusiasm for open source. Mm -hmm. I think that the talent that we have here in the Portland area is second to none mm -hmm. uh, on a lot of levels, but especially in the area of open source. We have, yeah, we do have a great pool of open source. Uh, it's the whole open source capital of the world. It is. It is. We Don't are the open me. source city and region of the world. So it makes sense that when it comes to technology and software, that that would be our strength. But it's not just that technology and software are open source in Portland. Uh, your administration has made great strides and tried to make sure that uh, we have more of an open city and that yep. we have a more of an open source uh, platform here. Can you talk That's a right. little bit about that? Well, I, I I think it, my efforts at making Portland much more open source, transparent, real time, mm -hmm. more accountable, uh, builds on, I think, the values and the traditions that this city and region have, have long held. What's held us back from more is sort of the, the barriers of not having the information, the barriers of not having the platforms and the, and the technology necessarily to really take full advantage of this value of transparency and openness that we have as a as a city and a region and so you know based on the feedback that we've gotten from uh, the software industry you know we went to town this past, this past year making our you know the a, a larger set of data points available to the public than any other region in the United States uh, backing that up though with more funding for uh, folks that are doing software development uh, to be able to do their work and then scale it up having the resources to take it to market scale it up. Having the city of Portland be a first customer to help folks work out the bugs, you know, in their initial sort of uh, launch of technology. And then our Portland 10, the sort of where we match not only resources, but then the, the best minds specific to project, you know, the, the actual uh, development. development of projects to match folks up with the best mentors that we can find. Um, I'm really excited. I mean, this is uh, this is the uh, public-private partnership, and it's very grassroots, and it's exactly what I wanted to see happen uh, when I ran for mayor. So I'm I'm really excited. Okay. So let me ask you one more question. It's kind of a chicken or the egg thing. Do you think what what came first? Do you think that Portland kind of became a hub for open source uh, because of the uh, the way of life that we have here, or do you think that uh, Portland's adopted that so much because we had so much talent? I think it's a little of both, but I have to say that it I think it's in our DNA. I mean, you know, this is the place of you know clean government. This is the place of planning, which is fundamentally about you know setting public goals and then reporting on whether you meet them or not. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's very sort of upfront government, very open 
source kind of government. So I think it builds on our tradition and we get to attract people that have those kinds of values, very talented people, and then they in turn push us in really positive and constructive ways uh, to do more. Then we open up more and they get more ideas and push us more. I think it's this great symbiotic, very positive symbiotic, uh, positive relationship. But fundamentally, you know, it's about the folks uh, behind us. That's where the ideas come from. The best ideas are going to come from, from <laughs> folks like this. Now, at this time of the morning, I've learned that this is not like a morning industry. I, I had a 7.30 breakfast. You had so a 7.30 I'm, breakfast? I'm up and well, with other people a, who were in the room. A rare exception. <laughs> and I started yeah, my remarks by saying I, I, it's okay <laughs> if they nod off, but please don't fall out of your chair. <laughs> But you know, it's the talent behind us that drives innovation, and, and our job, my job, is to support that in any way that we possibly You're doing can. Doing a good job. Well, thanks. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us. I'll let you get about your day. But you betcha. Thank you so much. Thanks for all the work y'all do. Bye. <laughs>